Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless the new shark warning after four suspected shark attacks in new york in just the last two days this morning fresh shark fears off the coast of new york prompting new warnings for beachgoers heading out to celebrate the july 4th holiday shark attack at the lifeguard station been notified Two incidents happening just seven miles apart. There have been multiple encounters this summer, including three in Florida in a little over a week. And back near Long Island, there's been a recent increase of tiger and sand sharks swimming closer to shore. I think it's crazy. There's been a lot of shark attacks happening on the beaches. To the teenager, lucky to survive an alligator attack, fighting back when the hungry gator took a bite out of him. I just got bit by a gator. Okay. And what part of your body was bit? Oh, uh, like my my right hip. Gabriel Clemens says he was walking along this creek in Winter Springs, Florida, with a few friends Tuesday evening after a swim, when the gator suddenly lunged toward him. I just did like what first came to mind. I was just like, go, go, go. Thinking fast, grabbing a stick nearby, Gabriel fighting to pull himself out of the gator's jaws. It was a, like a scene out of a horror movie with blood everywhere. This morning, a 73-year-old woman from Iowa who got the fright of her life in the Bahamas, recovering in the hospital after a shark encounter left her with injuries so severe, doctors had to amputate her leg. I didn't even see him approach me. He came from below and... It was just like a truck hit me. Gary has served as a volunteer LAPD cop for 18 years. Last week, the 71-year-old was responding to calls of the bee swarm to help direct traffic as fire trucks arrived. But then Gary became the victim. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Oh, this poor guy. I tried to get back into the car, but I thought if I open the car door, all these bees are going to come zipping right into the car. And we, in an enclosed area, my partner's going to start getting stung. So he bravely waves his partner off. They were like, each little sting was a sting with, with a poison going in. And that hurts. I mean, that really hurts. Bloodied and battered, the scene looks straight out of a horror movie. Looks like you're just so disoriented because they're just looking at them. Oh, yeah. Well, the, the bees were all around me. After finally escaping the swarm, he was rushed to the hospital where he had surgery on a fractured eye socket and spent five painful days recovering. This morning, experts are sounding the alarm. This is the season for swarming. About bees. In recent weeks across several states, humans and animals have been stung in multiple attacks. Literally thousands, at least a thousand on me and at least uh, uh, two or three thousand flying around the area. While out for some exercise, John Fisher and his dog were swarmed by hundreds of bees outside Phoenix earlier this week. Surveillance video shows him trying to fight the bees off, and when emergency crews arrived, even they got attacked before spraying him down. They were all over my arms, all over my face, all over my back. Fisher was stung 250 times. His dog, Pippin, 50. They're now recovering from their wounds. <laughs> In California last week, Tommy Baker was trying to clear a beehive himself outside Los Angeles when a swarm attacked him. Time to get out of here. Got to the point I couldn't see very far in front of me. There were so many bees just swirling around. Bees followed him and his neighbor's dog. He was covered head to toe. The dog, Chance, died days later. So why all these dangerous bee attacks? The state says Connecticut's bobcat population is on the rise, but they don't see many attacks. This makes three with injuries in the last three years. It's very unusual. Meanwhile, there's a, another attack involving a different predator down south. What can you tell us about that? Tragically, this was Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. A 69-year-old woman, according to authorities, left on the holiday with her dog for a walk. The dog returned, but she did not. Authorities there later locating her near a lagoon with the alligator guarding her body. It was more than nine feet long. Ultimately, they were able to reach her and determine that she had not survived. Her family, sadly, Craig, was in town for the holiday, and they say this is actually the second time in 12 months in that area they've had a fatal alligator attack. In one California neighborhood, some big visitors are lumbering by more frequently this summer. 
That's the way to do it, buddy. <laughs> Black bears, native across forests in North America, now creeping into neighborhoods like this one in Burbank, California, putting some residents on edge. RP reporting that the neighbor was being attacked by a bear. An extremely rare black bear attack that left a man dead continues to mystify authorities in Arizona this morning. According to officials, 66-year-old Stephen Jackson had been sitting enjoying his coffee Friday morning at a table on his property when a male black bear began to maul him. A bear to, to attack somebody in the morning like that, daylight, it was daylight. Jackson was heard screaming as the bear dragged him 75 yards down an embankment, multiple neighbors desperately trying to help. They tried to uh, get the bear to stop attacking him. There was honking horns, different things that they were doing. The attack only ending when a neighbor was able to shoot the bear with a rifle. The bear was killed, but it was too late for Jackson. He was pronounced dead at the scene. I didn't lose my life, lost an arm. It's not the end of the world. It's that attitude, that outlook on life, that stands out about Jordan Rivera. Despite being laid up in a hospital bed with wires all over, he's counting his blessings. His mother is too. That's the best thing is that I have him. Like, yes, arm gone, very traumatic, but he's here. An alligator attacked Jordan early Sunday morning, biting off his right arm and nearly taking his life. It was just the craziest thing. It was like almost like out of a movie. <laughs> From a great white in Cape Cod to a bull shark in the Florida Keys, shark sightings and attacks are making beachgoers nervous. In New Jersey, 15-year-old Maggie Drozdowski is on crutches after a shark bit her on the foot and pulled her underwater while surfing on Sunday. I really shook it off as much as I could. It was hard though, it was heavy, but I shook my foot as hard as I could to get it off. The shark left bite marks on her wetsuit. Just in shock because I feel like I just thought that was something that would never happen to me because I've watched like all the Jaws movies and stuff. I thought of it as like a joke. In Marathon, Florida, a bull shark tore into Kevin Blanco's leg twice while he was spearfishing last week. I've been in the water for a very long time. I've never seen a shark act like this. It was probably around anywhere from 9 to 10 feet, probably around 500 pounds. Just a day later, another shark bit a man on the foot in the Florida Keys. Killer whales could be learning to attack small boats. Scientists are warning about an increase in what appear to be a coordinated attacks by orcas on several vessels off the coast of Europe. One boat actually had to be abandoned and left to sink in the Strait of Gibraltar. A British couple setting sail off the coast of Morocco when a group of killer whales started battering their boat. The orcas continuing the barrage for at least an hour. They managed to keep the 46-foot sailing yacht afloat, but just days later, another vessel was not so lucky. Three killer whales struck the rudder inside of the sailboat, eventually causing it to sink as the Spanish Coast Guard rushed to the rescue. It's one of at least three boats that have sunk because of the orcas since last summer, and many more have been seriously damaged in the last three years. According to researchers, there were about 15 orca interactions when this began in 2020. Incredibly, that number has now ballooned into the hundreds by 2023. And all of them happening here along the Iberian Peninsula. It doesn't fit with anything we've ever seen anywhere else in the world. Over this 4th of July weekend, uh, we've had five shark-related incidents uh, in Suffolk County. This makes it clear that what we're looking at is likely a new normal here. Officials stress this isn't a passing trend. The sharks are not going away. Shark bites and shark incidents are something that we're going to have to be uh, addressing uh, on a more regular basis and are simply going to be a part of the routine of what we do uh, out here every day. As anyone that reads the Bible knows, the tribulation will be a terrible time on the earth, including devastating earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, great plagues, demonic powers. The Antichrist will rule and people will die by the millions. Jesus himself warned that it would be the greatest judgment that the world has ever seen, as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. One of those judgments is found in Revelation 6, 7, and 8. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with the sword, with hunger, 
with death and by the beasts of the earth. Since we are living in a time Jesus refers to as the birth pains, wouldn't it stand to reason that the beasts of the earth would attack humans in greater frequency and intensity? There are five parallels between the first five signs of the birth pains in Matthew chapter 24 and the first five sealed judgments in the book of Revelation. First sign, false Christs. Matthew 24, 4 and 5. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. First seal, Antichrist. Revelation 6, 2. Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering, and to conquer. Second sign, wars. Matthew 24, 6 and 7. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Second seal, war. Revelation 6, 4. Another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another. And there was given to him a great sword. Third sign, famines. Matthew 24, 7. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. Third seal, famine. Revelation 6, 5 and 6. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse. And he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. Fourth sign, pestilences. Matthew 24, 7. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. Fourth seal, pestilence. Revelation 6, 7 and 8. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come, and I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And its rider's name was Death, and Hades followed him. And they were given authority over a fourth of the earth, to kill with sword, and with famine, and with pestilence, and by the wild beasts of the earth. Fifth sign, Martyrs. Matthew 24, 9 and 10. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Fifth seal, martyrs. Revelation 6, 9 through 11. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer, until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren, who would be killed as they were, was completed. What does all this mean? We are seeing the signs in Matthew 24 taking place with more frequency and intensity, meaning we are getting close to Jesus opening the seal judgments in the book of Revelation, which in turn means the rapture of the church and the tribulation are very near. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Jehovah came back right now. Would you make it? 
Hell is a real place, and I don't want you to go there. We've been reporting on the bizarre phenomenon that seems to be taking place not just in this country, but all over the world. Getting angry at God isn't going to solve anything. Don't no, but damn me, young lady. I done said you can see that boy when we get to church. This is not the way it's supposed to be. yourself together and start coming to church with me. Not today, okay? I'll go with you next Sunday. Don't get left behind. Accept Jesus today. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. What does the Bible say about lawlessness? To be lawless is to be without any rules or order. Laws are necessary in a sinful world, as we read in 1 Timothy 1, 9 and 10, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and insubordinate, for the ungodly and for sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, and if there is any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. 1 John 3, 4 defines sin as lawlessness. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. When a society ignores the law, lawlessness is the result and chaos ensues. America's crime crisis is reaching new highs. The criminals are being let free. The businesses continue to get ransacked and the cycle continues. And the ones paying the biggest price? The store employees. It feels like they're the only ones that are being punished these days. Now, this year, two women were fired from an Atlanta Lululemon store for intervening in a shoplifting. And the same thing just happened in Colorado. A convenience store employee, Santino Barola, noticed three men walking out to their car with $500 worth of laundry products. So Barola, a former military police officer, follows them out to their car to try to get the license plate, you know, to help identify the perps. And he didn't harass them. He didn't physically engage with them. He just followed them with his cell phone. But luckily, the thieves were a little clumsy and had a little trouble making a clean escape. Damn, these guys are good. Look at them stealing. 
Really, bro? You gotta resort to this? Economy's not that bad. Oh, damn. And by the way, he took the cover off that plate. So you might be wondering how big of a raise this guy got for catching up to the Three Stooges. But when he showed up to work the next day, he was suspended. And a week later, he was fired. And after the store let him go, Barola took to social media to say he had no regrets. First off, I didn't see color when I confronted them. I seen criminals, uh, white, black, brown, purple, it didn't matter. A crime was being committed and wrong is wrong and a crime is a crime. And for those of you that are like, mind your business, let me tell you something. If something is happening right in front of me, I'm gonna make it my business. Joining me now is Santino Barola, the fired store employee, and Eric Van Cleve, an investigator with the Arapaho Sheriff's Department. Okay, thank you both so much for being here. All right, Santino, I want you to know I think you're a hero. I think you should have gotten a raise. I don't quite understand what happened, but what was your reaction when you found out that you were, you know, suspended and then fired? Well, thank you, ma'am. I appreciate your support, but um, I, I was shocked, you know, uh, devastated, honestly. Okay. Now, when you followed them out with your cell phone, what did you expect would happen? Uh, well, I, I was given a direct order by uh, the third person in charge to f uh, get the license plate. And my initial reaction was to record, you know, better evidence, to get their faces, the description of the vehicle, and, and the license plate. Okay. Number. Santino, I don't mean to interrupt you. You're telling me that someone in the store who was a higher up told you to go out and get the license plate? And you did a video of the yes, license plate and they fire you? <laughs> yes, ma'am. That's outrageous. Is this, is this a, a, a market under Kroger's in Colorado? Yes, ma'am, it is. All right. Uh, all right. Is it Sheriff? Can you tell me whether or not you would ever have caught these people if it weren't for Santino? We would have caught them at some point. But without Santino's uh, video that he gave us and me being able to do a little bit cleaner investigation, it would have been a lot harder, harder to do. His video to us immensely helped us in the investigation. I was able to, with other detectives, we were able to put the driver uh, in custody in jail within 24 hours, and we're still working on the other two. We should have that wrapped up, hopefully, by the end of next week, we're hoping. What do you think is going to happen to you at this point? I read the policy. The policy said you're not supposed to chase thieves or intervene in the theft. You did not do either. Have you thought about hiring a lawyer, Santino? Uh, the thought has crossed my mind. There's a lot going on in the works that I'm not able to comment on okay. at the moment, but yes. Well, something how about I comment lines. on it for you? They, they, it's bad enough they fired you, but when they, the supervisor told you to go out and do and get the plate number and you did, they fire you, that's a problem. Has it come to this? This store employee is actually putting security lids on pints of high-end ice cream. It says the lock will be removed at checkout by a store associate. It's hey. a high-theft item. Oh, hey. it's, yeah, it's the only... take 10 and oh, run out of the have... store. The shoplifting epidemic has gotten so bad, this Manhattan drugstore is protecting its ice cream with the heavy-duty chain and padlock. Another store is using this lock on the freezer door. Here, a clerk needs to unlock the freezer if you want to buy ice cream. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Ice cream thefts can be a real moneymaker for shoplifters. Police say they steal the pints in bulk, store them in coolers, and then resell them on the cheap to mom and pop stores. There's a black market for ice cream. You could stand on the corner and you could sell ice cream for a buck a pint, and people will buy it if it's a name brand. Shoppers we spoke to aren't too surprised. It's a <laughs> big problem. It's a shame. It really is. This is what the world has kind of come down to. Um, that is a little sad. Ice cream now joins a long list of everyday items like toothpaste, moisturizer, and painkillers that are locked up. So the next time you buy ice cream, don't be surprised to find it under lock and key. Psalm 1, 1 through 6, tells us the way of the righteous in the end of the ungodly. Psalm 1, 1 through 6, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, 
whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. We begin with the extreme heat baking much of the country. Almost 90 million Americans in 31 states will face temperatures above 90 degrees today, with the hottest part of the summer still to come. And get this, every day this week, the average temperature on Earth has been the hottest ever recorded. Manuel Bajorquez is covering all of this from Palm Beach, Florida. People here are waking up to temperatures already in the 80s. And when you factor in the humidity later today, the high will feel closer to 104 degrees. It's all part of that same heat dome that's impacting other parts of the country, too. In Miami, Florida, they're used to the heat, just not like this. It's toasty. Even by Miami standards. By Miami standards. Bo and his family spent Thursday trying to escape stifling temperatures, which only seem to be getting worse every year. According to Miami-Dade County records, in 1970, there were 84 days when the mercury edged past 90 degrees. Last year, that number soared to 133. You can see it's hotter, you know, throughout the year. And, you know, our winters are like that now. Too quick. Yeah, it's too quick. You know, you blink eyes and they're going. The mix of brutal heat and humidity has been felt across the country, from Arizona to Buffalo, New York, where the local pool provided a much needed relief. It's too hot, especially for kids. They just want to cool down in some sort of fashion. In Maine, firefighters are bracing for an increase in heat related emergency calls. None of us that live in Maine are used to this kind of heat. This trend is not going to reverse on its own and it won't reverse in the coming years. Scientist Amy Clement with the University of Miami says the heat waves are becoming even more serious the warmer the planet gets. You get some south winds or the ocean is a little bit warmer than usual. This could be naturally a heat wave, but I think what you're saying is that when you layer that on top of climate change, you get these dangerous levels. Right, and those dangerous levels actually occur for longer periods of time as well. It's a heat that's not just uncomfortable. Hey buddy, hey, can you hear me, man? It's scary. Authorities in Arizona releasing this video of a terrifying moment for two hikers near Tucson. Border Patrol agents airlifting them to the hospital. One hiker suffering extreme heat stress, the other losing consciousness, overcome by the triple digit temperatures. Around the country and around the world, the heat is inescapable and record breaking. Monday was the hottest day the planet has experienced since record keeping began until the record was surpassed on Tuesday and Wednesday. It is first week of uh, July. We've got climate change, we got El Nino, these temperatures in the waters behind me, they're above average as well. So yeah, we got a long summer ahead of us. Today, high temps in the 90s are hotter from Maine to Miami, 96 in Vermont, and in the West, heat advisories in at least six states. El Paso expected to hit 105, its 22nd consecutive day of triple digit heat. We're gonna break that record. Uh, 23 is the records we talked about consecutive 100 plus days. Look at that Saturday, Sunday, Sunday will break that record. These scorching temperatures amplified by climate change. The seven year tribulation is fast approaching this world and the news headlines prove it. God in his grace and mercy is trying to shake the world out of his complacency. We are currently living in a time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. Jesus is likening last day's events to a woman in labor. The closer we get to Jesus second coming, Last days, signs and calamities will become more frequent and more intense. Following the rapture of all the true Christians to heaven, the Bible warns that the wrath of God will be poured out on an unbelieving and unrepentant world. One of the judgments described in the book of Revelation includes extreme heat, as we read in Revelation 16, 8 and 9. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. Just one day after the deadliest attack on the western city of Lviv, Ukraine, since the start of the war, the U.S. is making a new move to better supply Ukraine to take on the Russians.
Two U.S. officials tell ABC News the Pentagon will provide cluster munitions despite human rights concerns. Cluster bombs have gained a reputation for killing and injuring civilians, especially children who come across the smaller explosives or bomblets that fail to initially detonate after being dropped. Many U.S. allies have signed a treaty banning their use. We would be carefully selecting rounds with lower dud rates. I would note uh, that the Russians have already been employing uh, cluster munitions on the battlefield. Meanwhile, new tensions between the U.S. and Russia. For the second consecutive day, Russian jets harassed an American drone over Syria, releasing flares in its flight path. Moscow claims the U.S. was violating protocols. To suggest that somehow um, you know, th this is our fault. Um, it's ridiculous. As the world continues to spin out of control, we can no longer afford to ignore the truth. Almighty God, the creator of heaven, earth, and all things is trying to get our attention. He is letting us know through powerful weather catastrophes and the events happening in the world around us that he is in control. And he is preparing to intervene in world affairs climaxing in the return of Jesus Christ. The signs of Jesus soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation. Repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church, you may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.